question because we are getting re ready now for the Mission Foods King of the Baggers Championship, and uh, that race going to be coming up here. And uh, it's been interesting. You know, you take a look. Kyle Wyman will be starting on pole. You look at the races coming in thus far. Kyle had the mechanical issue in the first race at Daytona. Then he's put together four straight wins. Then Bobby Fong got the win with Kyle third uh, at uh, the second race at Road America. Then they didn't run at the Ridge. So he's coming in here uh, with a pretty good head of steam and uh, qualifies it on pole once again. And this weekend as well, just been really fast from that very yeah. first session. And and honestly, if you look at Friday morning and in the, in the first day on Saturday, it looked like Hayden Gillum yeah. you know, was going to have the pace. And uh, Kyle was able to chip away at it. And this morning or yesterday afternoon in that qualifier really put in some good laps. And this morning was really consistent in that second qualifier. And, uh, you know, Kyle's had that uh, – He's had that look this year uh, of a guy who wants to really get that number one plate back. Tell you what, though, Bobby Fong has looked really fast here. And you think of that that uh, the challenge race that they did here, the three-lapper, uh, Bobby was hunting and was all over the back of Kyle when he had that little moment going up into the corkscrew. So uh, you're not going to count him out, that's for sure. And Hayden Gillum has been has showed speed. James Rispoli way up there in the points right now. And Travis Wyman looked like whatever they've been dealing with the last couple of races, they, they seem to have solved it. And uh, he's got speed now, too. So I think we're in for a, a really fun race here. And also, too, James Erspoli in that challenge had an issue early on, so he didn't get to finish that race. So there's a lot of good guys. Oh, you bet. And in qualifying, he was on a lap that would have had a middle of the front row uh, when he had a problem as well. So this is going to be a good one. It's time for Baggers here at WeatherTech Raceway. It's time for the Moto America AMA FIM North American Road Race Championship. This round, Moto America Superbike Speed Fest at Monterey from the famed WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca and our fifth round of nine for 2023 right here in Monterey, California. It's time for Mission King of the Baggers race number one. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the broadcast. I'm Greg White, standing alongside two-time world champ Jason Pridmore. Now, Jason, here we are at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. The racing surface is brand new, and traction has been an issue all weekend long. Yeah, especially with these big, heavy motorcycles. We've seen some little tip-overs and things, but mostly because there's just so much grip, these guys are getting tremendous lean angle, Greg. So we'll see how the races pan out. In terms of the championship so far this season, it's been a tale of two riders. In the championship hunt, it's been James Rispoli, who's led the way. Take a look at this graphic. You can see, Jason, he starts off with 25 points, Kyle Wyman zero, but as the season has progressed, Kyle Wyman now is 116 to Rispoli's 103. Yeah, when Kyle's running, he's the guy that beat so far, it would seem this year. Our last round at Road America was a little bit different, but the, these two guys right now are the first and second in the championship. And James started off really hot at Daytona and Kyle had some problems. And so that's why we've seen that transition in points. Yeah, Wyman went on a run of four in a row, but it was Bobby Fong who ends up winning the last race. So why don't we take a look at race highlights and get you caught up the last time. We we were racing Mission King of the Baggers. Yeah, some funny reminders right at the beginning. If you remember, his air suit airbag actually went off on the line, and you see him trying to get that to go down. But that was the last the field would see of the number 50. Bobby Fong dominated this race. The big battle, though, was for second. As you can see, Bobby out front by himself. I mean, Greg, he just literally checked out on this one. And uh, this is what this guy can do. Tons of experience on that number 50 Indian for Bobby Fong. Expect him to continue along this path throughout the course of the season. Let's take a look at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. It has fresh pavement, but the layout hasn't changed uh, dramatically since 1957. No, it's still the same lagoon. It's a great place up over that fast turn one into hard braking turn two. This is where some of those grip issues, we've been seeing tremendous lean angles in turn two from these bikes. Three and four flat corners. And of course, Greg, once you get to turn five, you're heading uphill all the way to that famous corkscrew. Down through rainy corner in turn nine, 10, and then you get to turn 11, hard braking turn 11. That's where your race can be won or lost as you head to the checkered flag. And Mission King of the Baggers kicked off its entire life right here at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. And the rider who won it was the number one plate. Can he get it done again on his Indian? We'll find out after this. And the bikes heading out on their warm-up lap. Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about a little bit here about Bobby Fong with you, Roger, quickly, is the fact that 
he had to make a decision. He felt he had to make a decision coming in here because he would have been racing three different bikes, three different series here uh, in the Hooligans, in the Baggers, and in Superbike. And he elected to step off of the Super Hooligan bike. Um, they found a pretty good replacement in Larry Pegram. Uh, but, you know, Bobby really deciding I, he, he needed to focus on the – the the two where he was really doing well yeah i mean he just finished the superbike race yeah. and jumped right on the king of the bagger but also i think for bobby he wants to find himself back on that superbike grid and he has an opportunity now on a good bike and he wants to take advantage of it the one thing he may have is a little advantage here coming off of that superbike it's a different bike but he's got some good track knowledge there's a big race coming up it's the baggers Mission King of the Baggers coverage is brought to you by Mission Foods, the world's leading brand for tortillas and wraps. By Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series. By Geico. Visit geico.com to see how easy covering your ride can be. And by Drag Specialties, an industry leading distributor of aftermarket parts and accessories for Harley Davidson and custom V-twin motorcycles. Starting grid for Mission King of the Baggers has Kyle Wyman, Jason Pridmore on top of the 128.586. Right next to him, Tyler O'Hara and Bobby Fong, Hayden Gillum, James Rispoli, and Travis Wyman out there on row two. Then we have Jake Lewis, Owens Park and Flinders, Corey West. A little unusual to see Jeremy Williams back on the fourth row next to Frankie Garcia, but that's where he will be. Cole King, Patricia Fernandez, Eric Stahl, and Danny Spina. I'm not sure what happened to Jeremy McWilliams in qualifying, but uh, you expect to see the 99 rolling forward as you get a good look at Bobby Fong. They've put that bike back together, Greg, after an earlier spill this morning in the challenge race. Bobby threw the thing down the road going up into the corkscrew, and he did it while running kind of the same pace as Kyle Wyman, as you see there, starting from pole position. So it'll be interesting to see if Bobby Fong or Tyler O'Hara can be a match for the 33. Eight lap scheduled mission, king of the baggers race number one. When the lights go off, we're rolling. Here we go, clutches are out. Up the hill we go under the mission bridge. And it looks like Tyler O'Hara got a good launch and will lead us into turn number two with Kyle Lyman right behind him. And it looks like one of the Vance and Hines Ducatis as well, Jason. Uh, at Harley Davidson. But All yeah, right, here's Ducati. <laughs> we're going old wow. school up here. We Har are going the Harley Davidson. Hey, I thought yeah. I'd be the one to do it. You did it. No, so. I did it, yeah. Yeah, you're going to see these guys accelerating out of turn three as a great camera view from our drone high up above as they feel their way into turns three and turns four. But I was looking to see who that was in third, actually, great, because it looked like white leathers. And uh, I, know, I know it's with Spoli there in fourth and i'm wondering if it's mick williams it's jake lewis i bet I, I don't think so no? let's have a look here we're gonna get a good look no it's it's bobby fong sorry yeah so it is bobby fong in a different color suit so yeah he oh, must that's have heard right that suit yeah this morning so bobby fong's actually on the indian challenger on that stock mile sci racing roland sands motorcycle out of stockton and how about rispoli looking pretty racy right now on the 43 on the banson hines mission harley davidson that's a road glide and then he's got Hayden Gillum just behind Bobby Fong. So I think for, I think what's happening right now for Bobby Fong, Greg, is he's going to need a couple laps to see if that bike is straight and it's good to go. I mean, he's only had a siding lap and a warm-up lap. But up front, Tyler O'Hara leading as it looks like Kyle Wyman in second. I thought for a minute Hayden Gillum was going to try to put the pass on Bobby Fong down in turn 11. Hayden Gillum has had some real pace this weekend on that Manson Hines Harley Davidson as he has a look up the inside of Bobby Fong as they go up over the top of turn one. He's going to have a shot down in turn two. No, Bobby Fong closes that door. So look at Hayden. He stuffs it up underneath Bobby Fong, makes room and gets that Vance and Hines Harley up to second little wave to say that was me just stuffing it up underneath you. And he's going to go chasing after his teammate now just up the road. Now, I think for some of these guys, seeing Tyler O'Hara lead Kyle Wyman is probably a good thing. Tyler hadn't, didn't quite have the pace this morning, although right now he's showing he has some pace. But Kyle Wyman, who set pole position yesterday afternoon, and then the same thing this morning, Kyle Wyman was very fast. He's being patient, and it's allowing this battle for third well, not really a battle right now where Spoli's getting away from those guys in that battle for third. Oh, look at Tyler O'Hara getting sideways up the hill. 
We've seen people throw it down the road doing that this weekend, Jason, in this eight-lap affair, and Kyle Wyman trying to find a way around him. And I'll tell you this. You know, we've, we've seen that out of both of these bikes in the past. The Harley, to me, seems like it, it's much more wheels in line than it used to be. I do see Kyle get that thing back then occasionally. But the Indian under heavy braking definitely seems to get a little bit more sideways earlier and longer than that of the Harley Davidson. So we'll see how that plays into even tire wear on these big bikes on this new surface. Over 600 pound motorcycles and Mission King of the Baggers. And in talking to Rispoli, he talks about when it does go sideways, how stable it is. Hannah, what do you got? Talking to Tyler O'Hara just ahead of this race out on the Superbike grid, actually, he told me he's got the consistency in this and the pace. They're still developing these bikes at a rapid rate, so every time he goes out, they're constantly learning, but he feels really comfortable, and he said having double duty with the Hooligans class this weekend has given him a lot of track time to really figure out this new track surface. He feels he's got a good handle on it. Yeah, that's the Indian Motorcycle Progressive Mission Foods Indian Challenger rider. And, of course, the first time we ever had Mission King of the Baggers was right here. I mentioned it earlier in the broadcast, and it was Tyler O'Hara who won it. So a ton of confidence here at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca for the Californian. Good run from Kyle Wyman out of turn six. He's going to get up alongside on the right. He's going to think about it. It's very hard to pass. Now, when they come down through the corkscrew here, the Harley goes from this right down into rainy corner really really well the thing i love about tyler o'hara is he always shows up on race day like always. he shows up all weekend don't get me wrong about what i'm saying but he is the guy that it sometimes can look this morning or earlier on this afternoon when we had our mission challenge race he was a little bit further back and right now he's probably made some sort of adjustment to that motorcycle and he's got that number one plate on there for a reason greg and uh and right now he's bringing it, as you see, Wyman in the draft up this front straightaway. He's going to have a look up the inside, not quite close enough as they get to the top of the crest there. But watch how the Harley turns here. Watch how much tighter Kyle Wyman can keep it. Last lap by, Tyler had, Tyler had it in there a little bit back then, and the bike ran it out a little bit wide. This time O'Hare actually controlled it that. Definitely the Harley Davidson finished the corner. That screaming eagle bike of Kyle Wyman, 33, the points leader. Rispoli trying everything he can to get up to the back of these two, but he's a couple tenths of a second off. Right now, James Rispoli trying to chase down Kyle Wyman, Hannah. Kyle Wyman trying to get around Tyler O'Hara here. He's looking for a way, but when I spoke to him, you know, you guys are talking about how well that bike is turning. He said the, the new surface is so good. He has so much grip that he's able to carry so much more lean angle that they had to make some changes to that chassis in order to find some more ground clearance so that he could get it leaned over the way that he feels he needs to. Yeah, Jason, and talking to James Rispoli, we saw a couple of crashes earlier this weekend from Mission King of the Baggers, and it looked like they were dragging bags and then upending the bike, but it turns out that it was basically the cases, the bottom of the motorcycle that was actually contacting because there is so much grip here with this new asphalt that these bikes are able to carry more lean angle than they've ever carried before. Well, right now, those Vance and Heinz Harley Davidson of James Rispoli and Hayden Gillum are matching the pace of the two leaders. They lost some time out of turn 11 there. That was the closest that we've seen Rispoli to those two leading bikes in front. As they came out of there, though, lost a little bit of room, lost a little bit of time again. You can see Tyler O'Hara gets that bike out a little bit wide in the middle, cuts it back on the exit. And I don't know if this is a case that Kyle Wyman doesn't have an answer yet as he continues to go to school on Tyler O'Hara or, you know, just looking at Kyle, he keeps looking back to see who's back there, which indicates to us that he might not have an answer right now. Well, he's taking a look back to see if he's going to have any real heat coming from behind him. If he decides to make a pass on O'Hara, maybe run a little wide or something like that. Kind of remember, Greg, these bikes are quite a bit wider than the things that we see normally racing. And this is the area where Kyle excels. He's really good through the middle of turn six and gets a nice run, but he's not really capable of doing anything. Now, from this spot, Tyler O'Hara really goes from that, that kink to the left right into the corkscrew, right onto the, onto the apron there uh, uh, at the top of the hill. He makes a straight line, so it's going to be hard for Kyle to go up underneath him when they get to the top of the hill there. Carrying a lot of speed down through turn number 10 as they shoot off to turn 11. When they come across the stripe, there'll be three to go in Mission King of the Baggers race number one. And boy, that Indian Challenger just comes off the corner. It really does. 
and he's good in, there's a couple of spots where O'Hara is really good. Number one, he's really good on the breaks, but more importantly, turns three and four, the flat corners, he's in wide this time, does he, does he create that space? He does. So it's a mistake from Tyler O'Hara getting down into turn two a little too deep. We've seen it in a couple laps before where he was letting the bike run out wide. This time though, the bike ran out too wide there. So now he's gonna have to go to school and see where he might have the better of Kyle Wyman. So now we're going to see about lap times because the fastest lap of the race was actually done so far by Corey West on the team Saddleman Harley Davidson Road Glide. Back in sixth place, either 128.3, we're at 128.7, 128.6 for these two. So now all of a sudden, Kyle Wyman has clear air in front of him and he is really trying to pull the pin and get away. Yeah, and this is the spot where he excels going through turn six, carries a ton of speed through the middle of that. And you can see when they're, when the, the positions are swapped there. Wyman's right up on the back of Wyman headed up that hill. Now you see here, the Indian challenger just gets in there a little bit too wide and it's just backed in for too long. He can't get to let go of the lever to get the bike to turn. So it runs him out real wide in the middle and it's an easy pass for Kyle Wyman. And you can see there's just the smallest of gap starting to happen as we look at some other riders coming down through rainy corner down into turn 10. So going through turn 11 is our leaders. And Wyman, my guess, going to go fastest lap of the race as Hayden Gillum passes Rispoli up into third. So Wyman goes 28.6.6, 28.6.7.9. So nearly matches his fastest lap of the race. So fastest lap of the race still at 128.3, set by Corey West a lap ago as Hayden Gillum on the march. Hayden Gillum just matching what Kyle Wyman was doing, but a couple tenths of a second quicker than the number one plate, Tyler O'Hara. Yeah, James Rispoli has fallen way back now, Greg, in fourth. So not sure what happened there. So, but Hayden Gillum's coming to the front, Hannah. He is, and we've seen him going fast all weekend long. I asked him what made the difference, and he said it's just a matter of getting more comfortable, getting more laps on this bike. They've been making changes all weekend for better front end feel, better turn in, and truthfully, less grip because the new surface is so good here that he's having a hard time getting it turned. I had a great chat this morning uh, with Terry Vance uh, on, uh, from Harley Davidson there, and Terry uh, loves the class. He's like, Jay, we're going to expect bigger things even more so going into next year. He's got two really reliable, great riders in Hayden Gillum. James Raspoli pedaling those bikes around and you can see that Vance and Hines has really closed the gap to the factory Harley and to the factory Indian and uh, you know with a guy like Hayden Gillum on there and you can see Raspoli just off in the background so he's still trying to get back on pace as they come up onto some back markers now as well but Hayden Gillum is just a little bit off of these guys Greg maybe a better start better start all right, so a 28.652 for Tyler O'Hara. That's his personal best lap of the race. A 128.777 and a 128.8 for Hayden Gillum. So identical lap times for the top three as Raspoli really drifting back now into the 29s, losing touch. Bobby Fong in fifth, Jake Lewis in sixth, Corey West in seventh. Where can this happen though? These are the turns where O'Hara is better. Turns three and four, you can see he closes up on the back of Kyle through those two turns. But once they get on the charge up to the corkscrew, as you see, Kyle goes a little defensive as they go into turn five. From this point on, the Harley just looks like it gets through turn six, which is such a key corner here at Laguna. You see Kyle swoop back over to the left to close that door. From this point on, he just rolls through the middle of six to the point where O'Hara can't really get near enough to him coming up into the corkscrew. Yeah, because Although it, this time he's ran it in really oh, deep. Oh, Tyler O'Hare, where's he going? Is he going to get a turn? He goes a little wide, side by side they go, and he's able to make it stick. So Tyler O'Hare wow, came move. from nowhere. Whoa, that was an incredible, what a pass. And it looks like Kyle Wyman, nope, he, he had a notion for a second, looking up the inside of turn number 10. There's a lot of camber in that corner, Jason. It can be deceiving on the grip, but now the number one plate going oh. sideways and he's down. He pushes too hard oh, and Kyle goes two. down too. Wow. Those hey. two riders pushing as hard, that is it. And how about that on the final lap, the checkered flag flies for Hayden Gillum who is gonna win the race, Rispoli, who is second in points and losing ground over the last couple races, ends up second, Bobby Fong third, Tyler O'Hara, he picked it up, Jason, oh, and he goes across fourth, Jake Lewis in fifth, Corey West, Jeremy McWilliams, and limping his motorcycle across the line is Kyle Unreal. Wyman in eighth.
What a turn of events on the last corner of the last lap. I was just going to say how much racecraft O'Hara was showing by closing the door down into turn 11. You can see this is an incredible move from O'Hara. I said he was straight lining that earlier on in the race, and that's exactly what he did. These two guys come down through Rainy Corner almost side by side. As you see, Kyle has the notion that he wants to try to get on the gas, try to do something with him when he gets to the rainy corner. O'Hara had none of that, shut the door. When they came out of turn 10, O'Hara moved all the way over to our right. When we look here, his left, and he's on the brakes hard, but his radius is very tight. You see that Indian moving around a lot. He falls, and the next thing you know, you see Kyle's bike sliding through the screen as well. He just got sucked in there, did Kyle Wyman. And all the while, it was Hayden Gillum who goes, what just happened here? I'll take that win. Gets on the gas, does the work, looks behind him, can't believe it. And Jay, you talked about Terry Vance and the Vance and I and Harley Davidson they crew. They are gonna be pumped. Pumped <laughs> as they <laughs> occupy first and second on the podium. And the points. The and points gonna close let's, up too let's a little bit. Let's see what happens. So for James Raspoli, he scores 20 points. For Kyle Wyman, he get, he'll get eight points. And that's what you got to do. They'll pick that bike up and keep going. All right, here's a look at Hayden Gillum's race winning pace. A 28.571 on lap number four. And he's the first rider to be able to negotiate turn number 11 on the final lap of this race. How do you like that? All right, so when we come back, we're going to talk to Hayden Gillum and talk to him about his win. I think one word applies here, Roger. Wow. <laughs> that was unbelievable. Never know. First of all, what an incredible move on the brakes up into the corkscrew by Tyler O'Hare. Both of us were kind of going, oh, he's not going to make that. He's going to go right off. And he makes it stick and makes it happen, and then they both tip it down into 11. So watch this move here, Roger. Yeah, Tyler just had a really good run there and was on the inside, but you can see Kyle's not giving up the position because they're going to go down into rainy curve through here. Look at that. Tyler did a great job staying on the track, but Kyle is not giving up trying to get on the inside before rainy, but, you know, Tyler just had more momentum and headed in here to the last corner here, turn 11. I think they both outbroke themselves a little bit. I think that's what happened to Tyler. Well, watch Tyler, that thing's moving like crazy. Yeah, and and maybe when he crashed, he could have flinched for Kyle yeah, a little bit. just enough, to, yeah. And you can see them both just running over there. They know points are up for, for grabs, and you know, those are those are heavy. They picked them. Yeah, Look both of them. Look at both running. Look at that. I mean, that's just. Two really good veteran riders yep. knowing to go get the bike, pick it up right away as fast as possible and try to try to get as many points as possible. And knowing that those bikes are tough, tough bikes, right? And uh, uh, so uh, and look at that. I mean, Hayden Gillum going down in that corner, uh, riding it out. Uh, you know, so that corner has, has oh, bit. That corner has bit everybody at least once <laughs> it seems I mean, like it yeah everybody has been down at turn 11 once it's just the front brake there trailing the brake hard a little bumps as you lean in uh it's got a lot of us well and as uh you know hayden gillum said down on the grid to handle opa he said i've been down twice already here i'm just hoping i can bring this thing home and he ends up with a win Mission King of the Baggers coverage is brought to you by Mission Foods, the world's leading brand for tortillas and wraps. By Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series. By GEICO. Visit GEICO.com to see how easy covering your ride can be. And by Drag Specialties, an industry-leading distributor of aftermarket parts and accessories for Harley-Davidson and custom V-Twin motorcycles. Well, now that that insanity is over, Hayden Gillum with the win over Rispoli and Bobby Fong. Tyler O'Hara, that could be really wow. big for the championship, yeah. picking up his bike and finishing fourth. Let's get right down to Hannah, who has our winner. And it's a first victory on the bagger for Hayden Gillum. He's got his son Stone here to celebrate with him. Hayden, you had a front row seat to that drama. Tell us about it and how you put yourself in the position to capitalize on that. Yeah, I didn't give myself uh, a good first couple laps. I got a pretty rough start, and uh, I had the pace to go, so so I was able to make some passes, and and James was starting to kind of run them down. I know I know they were kind of 
Kyle was having a hard time getting past Tyler, and uh, Tyler was kind of holding him up a little bit. But yeah, I kind of, I had kind of given up on that last lap, and then I saw him start getting a little dicey, and I was like, okay, I got, I got to keep going because if, if something does happen, I need to be there, and. and you know, it, it happened, and unfortunately, that's that's how we got the win. But the Vans and Hines boys gave me an awesome, awesome bike today. So it's it's cool to get this first win and have another one too. We haven't done that since the first race of the season, so it's uh, it's awesome. And having Stone up here with me, I'll take it. Congratulations to Hayden Gillum, second place today. Hayden's teammate James Rispoli, James, going back and forth out there with your teammate. Take us through that race for you. Yeah, no, it was pretty gnarly for me. Um, I thought I was closing on Kyle and Tyler for a minute when they were goofing off, and I thought uh, Kyle was just kind of waiting a little bit here and there, but I kind of spun up a little bit. Hayden had really good pace. I thought he was going to catch him, and I, I thought it was all over when Kyle went by, and then Tyler made a charge there, and you think about it in your head because I'm just lonely. I look back, I got no behind it. I'm like, I wonder if something's going to happen, and I'm watching it as like I'm on TV, and I'm like... Man, and then I see uh, Tyler crash, and I'm like, oh, I'm on the podium. And then I saw Kyle crash, and I was like, I'm looking around, and I'm like, is it a joke? And uh, no, man, it's not. Vance and Hines won two. We're Harley. We're on the uh, on the podium. It, it's a shame for Kyle and Tyler because they were riding really, really good. But at the end of the day, you got to have a little luck in this championship, and uh, we got a horse you up our ass. So, congratulations, James Rispoli. Always love chatting with him. Bobby Fong rounding out her podium, coming off a win last round. How are you feeling after this race to kind of carry this momentum over and still finish here on the podium this weekend? It's good to be on the podium. I'd rather uh, not happen like this. We definitely got gifted today, but uh, we got some points. We got some money, and uh, we just got to work on some stuff. We had a little bike problems out there from uh, the crash earlier, but I'm looking forward to tomorrow, and uh, that's the good thing about having two races. So uh, good job to these boys. Everybody ran great, and uh, unfortunate to the factory boys, but uh, it's racing and um, they got another chance tomorrow as well. So I'm looking forward to a, a better battle tomorrow. Bobby Fong rounding out your Mission King of the Baggers podium. Well, horseshoes make a difference. They, apparently they do, yes. <laughs> Our coverage for Mission King of the Baggers continues after this. Well, I think what we heard from James Trispoli there kind of <laughs> it, it expresses the opinion of not just us, uh, but probably any fans that were watching it as that unfolded. Uh, just unbelievable what happened. Uh, but, you know, a podium is a podium, and a win for Gillum is a win. And both those guys, Gillum and Rispoli, are well up in that points championship, yep. so that was big. And when you, pat, when you uh, cash that first place uh, check at the bank, <laughs> they don't ask you if you got lucky. They just put it right into the account. So uh, you take them how you can get them. And, you know, it, it's probably happened to these guys, too. You know, oh, they, sure. They've been leading the race and crashed toward the end and been, you know, gifted a, uh, somebody else a podium or a win. So it's just part of it. And that's why you never give up. You keep fighting like Hayden said he did. He's just fighting the whole time. And yeah. Yeah. Things came his way. Well, you know, they came in here with Wyman leading by six, uh, 13 points over Rispoli. Uh, James now with that second is going to close that up. Gillum was 14 points behind Rispoli with a win. He's closing that up. And O'Hara was fourth. Fong was fifth. So this championship uh, is going to be snug. And when we go into that race tomorrow, uh, and that uh, it, it's just so compelling watching these races because you so literally – don't know what's going to happen because uh, these bikes are just so unique and so much fun. And boy, what a race that was today here at WeatherTech Raceway. Before we get to your championship standings, Jason Pridmore, here's a look at the highlights from race number one. Yeah, Greg, here you go. It's, uh, Tyler Hara got a great start. He was able to pretty much control the pace of this race until a small mistake that we'll see here in a minute. You see Bobby Fong in third. He would get past by both of Anson Hines, Harley Davidson's of Rispoli and Hayden Gillum. As you see, Gillum here is making his way to the front. We knew he got a bad start, so yeah, he had to go through quite a few people. The battle at the front, though, it looked like Kyle Wyman was just kind of sitting on the back of O'Hara until this mistake. We saw O'Hara getting down into turn two, but he wasn't done. I said, this guy's a racer, Greg. He makes a direct line on the last lap right into the corkscrew. These guys go down to the right-hand part of the corkscrew side by side. They weren't done yet, though. O'Hara does a nice job of controlling uh, the line on the way in, except he had a little bit too much speed, pulled the lever on too much, and Kyle Wyman was making the same mistake right behind him. And Hayden Gillum gets his first win in King of the Baggers.
You know what they say, Jason? To finish first. First, you must finish. All right, so this is the standing. Let's see what happened here. Ah, how do you like that? One single point separates Kyle Wyman from James Rispoli after that mess at the end of the race. Hayden Gillum now only 10 points back and Tyler O'Hara 30. Yeah, we have a real big championship battle here between these four riders for sure. O'Hara's going to come back swinging tomorrow. Whatever changes they made to the bike from the challenge race to that race, the bike looked much better for Tyler. So expect him to do that. We don't see either one of those two guys making those kind of mistakes very often, both Tyler O'Hara and Kyle Wyman. But for us, it's made the championship a lot closer and a lot more fun to call. It's going to be exciting to watch the next one coming at you from WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. For Hannah and Jason, I'm Greg. Thanks for watching. We can't wait to bring you Mission King of the Baggers, race number two. My name is Matthew Miles. I'm the brand relations manager for Revit.